I am probably one of the best portrait sculptors of my generation. These are some abstract pieces of uh, Michael Jackson um, from some of his signature movies and uh, music videos. So I'm just going to be doing a whole series. This is one of the first pieces I did. This is of uh, Sojourner Truth. And uh, the car that comes with it, you know, has a little bio of her as well and so forth. So this is a piece that I like very much. The famous conductor John Williams, who did the score for E.T., Schindler's List, Star Wars, and so forth. That's him there. Oh, here's Bob Marley. Ah, the man himself. Here's Bob. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Look at the hair. Yeah. yeah. Details. Jackie Chan, yeah. Well, this is an interesting piece. Um, it was commissioned by a friend of his named Curtis Wong. And there are only three in existence. Curtis commissioned me to do one to give to Jackie from Curtis as a gift. Mm -hmm. So when Jackie got the first one, he came to Curtis's office and saw the second one and said, I want that one too. <laughs> and then I ended up with the last one, the third one. And what's unique about this is it has Jackie Chan's actual signature. I don't know if you can see it, but this is a pretty valuable piece because it contains Jackie's actual signature. Because my work is mostly historical, I got to do a lot of research. Okay, so another great um, artwork. Yes. Mother of Humanity. Oh, yes. Please elaborate. Take your time. Thank you. Thank you. Well, in the world, there are masterpieces. You know, mm -hmm. there's the Mona Lisa, mm -hmm. you know, and mind you, I'm not really comparing the Mother of Humanity to that, but mm -hmm. the thing about the Mother of Humanity is it has hit a chord. And why? Because everyone has a mother. Mm -hmm. Right? So there's yeah. no place on the planet where human beings or animals or li life forms, you know, <laughs> you come into mama. existence without mother. But what has happened that I've really known for a long time is that society in general has undervalued women and they have not given women the power to raise the children properly. Wow. You know, it's a kind of a male dominated world and it's not, it's unfortunate because our first teachers are our mothers, yeah. you know. So it just occurred to me, well, something's out of balance. Maybe the entire planet is out of balance because it's all male dominated. Yeah. So the mother of humanity is one way to help restore the balance to uplift women, uplift mothers, and put mm. the mother and the woman back on the throne and say, okay, there needs to be a balance. There needs to be a balance. And, um, and that was the statement. Now, the idea for the Mother of Humanity came about after the riots in Los Angeles in 1996, I believe, mm -hmm. 92. Mm -hmm. There was a riot, and after that riot, um, I live in a building where there were um, Asians, Africans, African Americans, and we all got along. After the riots, everybody became a little edgy and skeptical, and I said, this is not right. We were all family at one point, and now we're all kind of you know, antagonistic. So the idea for the Mother of Humanity was that we're one family, mm -hmm. and one family, one future. Mm -hmm. The entire future of this planet depends on the fact that we mm -hmm. recognize ourselves as one human one. family, brothers and sisters, no matter what. And right here, we have just an idea of how big the mother of humanity is going to be compared to the Statue of Liberty. You know, we have statues that represent um, a lot of different countries and continents, like for here in America, we've got the Statue of Liberty that represents America, but we don't have anything that really represents Africa. So my idea will be to create a monument for Africa that's about 313 feet tall, approximately twice the size of the Statue of Liberty. And I know that you have one here in Los Angeles? Yes. In Watts? In Watts. Okay, you have a total of seven? Uh, planned. 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 Okay, yeah. where, where are they going? Well, and why? Um, Africa, Australia, Brazil, China, India, and Spain. Those are the other locations. There's one here in America, in Watts, at 109th Street and Central Avenue, and it's 16 feet tall, it's the first one. The others that I plan are also gonna be 16 feet tall, mm -hmm. except the one in Africa, which is going to be 313 feet tall. Oh. which is like twice the size of the Statue of Liberty because Africa is the birthplace, a cradle of humanity. When I created her and unveiled her in 96, I saved the original head. So what you're looking at here is the actual original head that will be duplicated for the other six, or excuse me, five statues around the world. Of course, it will be enlarged for the one in Africa that's going to be 313 feet tall.
Africa is the cradle of civilization, the mother of all humanity. And right now, when we look at it politically, you know, all the continents are still nursing at the breast of Mother mm -hmm, Africa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All the raw materials are going overseas. All of the things that Africa produces is going outside and Africa is starving. So mm -hmm. Africa is feeding the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So the mother of humanity is my plans, crazy as it may be, but don't forget, in 1980, I had a crazy idea that came out, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so the idea is that um, the mother of humanity um, will be all over the world and those other locations that I mentioned, uh, Australia, Brazil, China, India, and Spain, they have had a significant influence uh, from African people. Mm -hmm. People don't even know that if you take a look at the Chinese DNA, it has African mm -hmm. DNA. So those places are to remind everybody all over the world that Africa okay. is the... I am truly honored to be sitting next to the man is going to make the Statue of Liberty oh of my, Africa. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and 300 feet? 313 feet. Why so specific and how yes. in the world are you going to do that? Well, you know, like, like all things, um, we never really know. Uh, we just realize that we each have a destiny and we're guided by uh, an intelligence. And if we just honor that, uh, it leads us to things that we're supposed to do. I mean, why did I, here's an example. That statue of Michael Jackson, 1990, mm -hmm. it wasn't really accidental in a way, maybe it was, but I literally just walked into an office, somebody said, hey, we're looking for a sculptor to do a statue of Michael Jackson, uh, can you do it? And I just had my portfolio of statues of Michael that I already did, and bingo, I walked right into the pages of history. And I've since done other artwork for Michael that I was able to present to him personally. I was his bodyguard for one of his birthdays. I mean, I had a long association wow. with Michael, um, but that's how life moves you. So to get back to the mother of humanity, I have no idea how I'm going to do this, but I know it's going to be done. Yeah. Why 313 feet mm -hmm. tall? Because seven is a, a spiritual number for me. So the mother of humanity in Watts is 16 feet tall, but you add six and one, you get seven. There are seven locations around the world where she's going to be placed. 313 feet tall, three, and three, and one, seven. Wow. So it's all spiritual based. November 7th is my birthday. Oh, cool. So yeah, it works out. <laughs> wow. Later on, we're going to look at some of your artwork, and cool. you have something big coming on. Yeah. Do you want to kind of talk about that? Yeah, it'll be um, my largest project to date. Mm -hmm. You know, the Mother of Humanity was 16 feet tall, mm -hmm. but can you picture five statues that are each 15, 16 feet tall? That's my next project. In the same arena, you mean? Yeah, it's wow. for the Mexican-American community. I was approached by a Veterans Memorial Committee comprised of Mexican-American veterans of war. And um, they came to me because there is an area in Los Angeles, East Los Angeles, called Five Points. And at that location, five streets come together. But because of the traffic hazard, and it was just really just hard to navigate that area, they've decided to change it into a roundabout. Um, but they've commissioned me to do this monument to honor Mexican-American veterans of war from the earliest times, from the Civil War all the way up to Desert Storm. So it's an all wars memorial. And there will be five different uh, branches of the military, um, male and female. And they'll all be saluting. Um, the, there's an Aztec pyramid here. They'll all be saluting a flag behind it. But the Aztec pyramid is a symbol of Mexican culture. Then this obelisk is a structure that's already there that will be placed on top of the Aztec pyramid. Then this um, wall, what we call the memorial wall, on the inside of this wall, it's going to have what we call bar reliefs, which are sculptings that depict the history of the Mexican-American from the beginning all the way up to the present. And these flags will be like the American flag, the prison of war flag, and everything. It's going to be a landmark. And to give you an idea of the scale, here, these small figures, these represent people compared to the size of the mm. bronze statues, which are each 16 feet tall. So this is going to be a huge structure. Mm -hmm. When is this, when are you going to, when is this going to be done? Uh, probably about two years. Okay. Yeah. And this is the area called Five Points, where the streets are converging. And uh, right in the center will be where the monument sits. Patrice Lamumba, tell us a little bit about him. Again, truth and justice drives my work. 
and my interest. So I happened to be watching a film about the life of Patrice Lumumba. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now our cell phones, mm -hmm. we, our cell phones won't work unless it has coltan, which comes from the Congo. Mm -hmm. And people, women and children, are digging coltans with their hands, and it's causing birth defects and everything else. So yeah, but the, the world's resources of coltan is in the Congo. So Patrice Lumumba in the 1960s knew that when he became prime minister, he said, I want to use the resources of my country for my people. Why are we starving and the rest of the world is getting rich and wealthy off of our material? Let's use it for ourselves to build ourselves up first. This is what got me in the film Lumumba by Raoul, um, Raoul Peck. Okay. This is really horrific, right? They killed the guy. And then, because they didn't want any traces of him left, they went back, dug up his body, cut it up, burned it in acid, and then scattered his remains all over the place. I mean, that was a little too much. So I decided that I wanted to resurrect Lift his memory. Mm -hmm. I set about creating the statue of uh, Patrice Lumumba, and again, magic happened, because somehow I got in touch with Lumumba's youngest son, Wow. Guy Lumumba, who was still in his mother's womb when his father was murdered. So he didn't even have a chance to see his father. So I let him know that it's my interest to raise up this great man who stood for his people mm -hmm. and sacrificed and gave his life for his people. Mm -hmm. After making contact with Guy, um, he saw the work and uh, he was moved profoundly because he said that I brought his father back to life. Again, a very large statue. Yeah. I'd like to put one in the Congo because they got a statue of Lumumba in the Congo right now, but it doesn't look anything like him <laughs> at all. <laughs> You're gonna make it happen. <laughs> yeah. This is a work that I'm very, very proud of because I've done a pretty good job, I must say. Um, judging from the reaction of people who knew Patrice Lumumba, they say that this is the, the best likeness of Patrice Lumumba that exists right now. Even the one that is in the Congo today can't touch this one. This is Patrice Lumumba. So how do you, when you get commissions, how do you say no, yes, maybe so? What are you holding to, on to to pick that project? Um, or not pick that project? Truth. Truth. Yeah, that's all. It's truth. truth. If it touches you. Yeah. If it touches yeah. you. I'm not interested in doing statues just to do it. Nah, has, let somebody has, else do it. So you heard earlier in an interview that Nigel said he's good. He is great. This is one of the first pieces that I did portrait-wise, and this is kind of when I knew I had some, some skill. Because <laughs> this is Gandhi. Ears and nose and everything, this is Gandhi. So um, very excited. How did you excited. get that? How did you, the head, look at the head, the ear, how did you, what, where did you get this from to do that? The inspiration? Yeah, the inspiration mean? behind that. Well, once again, e, all the stuff that I do, all the work that I do is based on... Well, do you know the story behind Gandhi? He, he freed his people, he freed all of the continent of India. One man, one human being, mm -hmm. liberated his entire country. I mean, that took a strength of will that you just have to admire somebody like this. So I just wanted to say, okay, let me see what this person looked like, <laughs> you know. Um, to be able to do what he did. So it's inspiration because we all have things that we want to do mm -hmm. in life, but mm -hmm. sometimes we need people to inspire us. And quite frankly, Gandhi inspires me, mm -hmm. you know, by what he was able to do. I'm really floored by the details. <laughs> did you do this from a picture? Yes. Oh, you did? Wow. Yeah, I, I work from photographs. Wow. I, so I could take a picture of you from front, left side, right side, and a couple of weeks later, you're looking at yourself. This is Caribbean talent. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So we are here looking at a sculpture. What is this guy thinking about? <laughs> well, <laughs> Why is he so mad? <laughs> yeah. Well, this is my version of David. Um, all throughout the ages, sculptors have challenged themselves by creating statues of iconic moments in history. And so you have Michelangelo's David, you have Donatello's David, and those are famous. But the reality is, you know, a lot of the people in the Bible, hush, hush, we're black. They're people of color. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, so this is my rendition of David. Now, this version of David shows David as a young man, but this is at the time when David has 
been in combat with the giant Goliath. Mm -hmm. And he's already used the sling, pow, and Goliath is down. But now he's contemplating the next thing that must take place in the Bible, which is he's going to take the sword and chop Goliath's head off. So here we find him at a moment of contemplation standing, looking over the giant with a sword behind his back, looking at the next thing that he has to do, which is to cut the head off of the giant. So this is that story of David. Renoko Rashidi is one of the greatest African scholars alive today. He's traveled virtually all over the planet, literally so. I mean, he's gone to every corner of the world looking for traces of black people and where black people are. So we don't honor our scholars and our heroes and heroines enough. So nobody on the planet was ever going to do a statue of Renoko Rashidi. I know that for a fact. They're going to wait until he's long gone and then say, oh yeah, he was a great scholar. But I know that this needs to be done now. So this is um, a portrait of Renoko Rashidi. My work extends not to one ethnic group. Um, right now, nobody knows that Shirley Temple, does that name ring a bell? Well, at the time Shirley Temple was making movies, um, they used to cut out the scenes in her movies where she was holding hands with a black man because they didn't, I know, as crazy as that sounds, they cut those scenes out. So here it is in my time, I am the one chosen to create the first and only statue of Shirley Temple in existence. And she was there for the unveiling. So oh. my portrait work is at the top of its field. And most people, most people don't even know that black people sculpt. Yes. Or, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, you look at some of these things that I do later on and you say, hey, I don't know black men did that or black people did that. But yeah. So, um, and I say that because there is a need for me to pass on, yeah, that's something I need to tell you guys. Mm -hmm. There's a need for me to pass on what I know to another generation, right? So one of my goals, and no one really knows this yet, so here's another first, but I'll be opening a school. Uh, the House of Nijar will teach people how to do what I do. It'll be a legacy, for example, that will be a continuation of things that have been done in the past so we can move forward and build on it. So I've got the legacy of having done work for Shirley Temple, Patrice Lumumba, Michael Jackson, everything. But someone coming after me, will they have to reinvent the wheel all over again? No. So my intention is to pass on my knowledge and open a school to teach people how to continue to preserve our legacy and uplift people through art, through the art of sculpting. Wow. So that's a exclusive. That's a key TV exclusive. <laughs> wow. The incredible talent that the Caribbean has produced, whether it's Grace Jones, whether it's Marcus Garvey, whether it's Bob Marley, there's something about the Caribbean people. Um, as small and tiny islands like Jamaica produces giants that move the world. So I just say continue to dream, you know, continue to pursue whatever goals you have, whatever dreams you have in your mind and your heart, continue to do that and continue eating that good food. Oh, that's where yes. <laughs> now you talked about food, you well, did it. Oh. What's your favorite? Well, it's gotta be Aki. Aki, Aki and Sawfish? Aki and Sawfish. I, that's I two for two. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Patties, I gotta tell you, I picked out on patties. I always do every time I go to Jamaica. <laughs> I love patties. <laughs> I love patties, I tell you. <laughs> Um, but my other favorite fruit is, um, or food, is a fruit, the mango. You know, there's another fruit that I, I had in Jamaica, I don't hear anything about it anymore, but rose apples. Rose apples. I don't hear anything about rose apples anymore. And then there's another thing that they call uh, tinkinto, stinkinto, right? It's good. I love it, <laughs> right? Tinkinto. And I don't even know how to describe it because it's, it's hard to describe, but it's delicious. I want to get back to the martial arts. Okay. Okay. You're not leaving here, and I'm not, or I'm not leaving here without uh, you showing me. Oh. So, ah. We're here right now looking at some of Nigel's martial arts equipment yeah. and gear. Yeah. Okay. Well, what are these? Um, I call them playthings, actually. <laughs> they are pads for training, uh, for kicking, punching, and developing speed, and uh, weapon training and so forth. They're just playthings. So we're going to have Nigel show us some of his moves. Okay. 
So what is this? This is a mok jong or wooden dummy, and it's used to practice. some hand moves. Wow! No! <laughs> oh! Okay. Take that! Very good, very okay. good. So I have a yellow belt, well, a black belt now. A black belt now, okay. that's right. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, I'm gonna make a movie one day. That's about the time period of the Moors. Many people don't know, but um, African people rule Spain for 800 years starting from um, 711 AD to 1492. Mm -hmm. And that's the period, a glorious period of Africans in Spain, in Europe, all of Europe. So I want to make movies about that time period. Hey, this is Nigel, and you can catch me on Facebook, and you can also find me on my website at nijart.com. That's N-I-J-A-R-T.com. And you're watching my Key TV. Afiala Wee. Mm -hmm.